So hello and welcome to the April session of Ask Nice. I'm Bonnie Murray and this is Marilei Colin Robles. You probably recognize Marilei as the person who brings us the NASA moment each month and she will be doing so later in the broadcast. Um, I'm coming to you or we're both coming to you from NASA Langley Research Center and that is kind of the home of the NICE project, uh, NASA Innovations in Climate Education. And that's the basis for the Ask NICE program. NICE is, is a MUREP funded program, the Minority University and Research Education Projects program. So we're happy to have that funding and to be able to bring you these broadcasts. I'm going to start by welcoming in everyone who is watching through the uh, link, watching online, the webcast. There are two ways that you can participate in the session. The first is that you can type into the comment box that should be right under your viewer. So where you're watching us, right underneath that, there should be a little box that you can type into. If there's not, you might need to expand your window and enlarge your window because it actually should be there. Uh, so if you're not seeing it, enlarge your window and see if that helps. Uh, the other way that you can communicate with us is to send out a tweet and put the hashtag AskNice in the tweet. And that way you'll be able to um, to communicate with us through both of those ways. And I'm going to let Monica say hi because she's walking in now. You're probably used to seeing Monica each month as well. Monica is the project manager for the NICE project. So you can just come in behind Hello here. everybody. <laughs> How are you? I just wanted to say welcome and thank you so much for plugging in on behalf of the Minority University Research and Education Program out of headquarters. We are pleased that you are able to plug in and we're really looking forward to um, Bonnie and Marile hosting <laughs> this uh, awesome series, um, the last series of our Ask Nice series. And we really appreciate you all making this a huge success. So thank you very much and have a great series. Thanks, and I'm glad you could be here with us, Monica. Yes, that's awesome. So thank you. So that's, uh, let me welcome now, let's go to the sites that are connected with us into the Google Hangout. And by the way, if you're watching and you're interested in doing this, as Monica said, this is the last session for this school year, but we will be starting up again in September or October, we're not sure yet, but early uh, next school year. So if you're interested in being one of these people that's in the Hangout with us, if you want to hang out with us, <laughs> uh, let us know and uh, communicate with us through the uh, chat window or our, the hashtag that I mentioned and we'll make sure that you get connected to future sessions. So let's start with the people who I believe are furthest out and that would be Mecklenburg schools who are out at the Lake Country Distance Education Center. So hello to teachers and um, probably some administrators as well out at Lake Country. Do you want to unmute and say hello and we'll make sure we can hear you? Hi Bonnie. Hello. All right, great. We're glad you're there with us. And as I said, that's uh, representatives from Mecklenburg School. They're down in far southwest Virginia, I guess is where I would describe that. And then moving east a little bit, we have the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research Connected, and that's Dana Salicki. Hello, Dana. Hello, how are you? Very good. How are you, Dana? Doing well. Good, good. Is it winter over there? I didn't ask you folks in Lake Country. I mean, it was a beautiful, almost summer-like weekend last weekend, and now we're back in sweaters and scarves, and winter has returned here. So uh, is, are you experiencing the same weather over there? It was cold middle of the week, but it's warming up and going to be a beautiful weekend. Oh. I bought a motorcycle yesterday and like to froze to death bringing it home. <laughs> I bet you had icicles when you got off, right? Yikes. Well, um, well, we'll talk about that. Maybe that's uh, something that we need to bring into the conversation today, be thinking about how that might be part of the changes that we're experiencing. So kind of hold on to that thought, and we'll, we'll uh, discuss that in a little bit, too. And then I mentioned that Mecklenburg was connected from far southwest Virginia, but we're going to travel even further west and welcome in Michelle Villard. Hello, Michelle. Michelle is connecting from Carson City, Nevada. So what are your temperatures out there like today, Michelle? Hi, 80. Oh, wow. Okay, we're jealous. <laughs> but that's great. <laughs> well, we'll get there, I'm sure. But thanks for connecting. Michelle is a fellow educator as well. And she also brings programming to students in after school and camps and things like that through her Mind Builders organization. So Michelle, we're happy to have you with us as well. 
And then you're seeing Margaret Mooney connected in there. She's kind of hanging out in the background now. Margaret is our content expert, our subject matter expert, and she'll be connected with you in just a few minutes to bring you information about today's session. So as always, our sessions here are focused on two things. First, we want to increase your content knowledge. We want you to leave knowing more than you did about the subject matter that we're discussing. And then we want to have you also leave with resources that you can plug right into your classroom instruction. And I feel strongly that you will agree when you leave the session today that you've gotten both pieces of that content and resources. Uh, the session today is focused on a summary uh, a climate change summary, what we know and how we know it. We've been connecting since November and discussing various elements of climate change and so perfect timing that today is a summary of all of that information and a recap on what we know and how we know it. So let's start by sharing some slides with you and um, letting you think a little bit about this topic and get your minds in gear before Margaret begins sharing information with you. So the first slide, you'll see some pictures. Look at those pictures and see what you think about those. And then the questions are, what is climate change? So what does that term mean? What is climate change? And then have you or someone that you know been affected by climate change? So ponder that over for a little bit and um, think about what those pictures might be indicating as well. So any thoughts on that, on those two questions? So let's start further out west. Can you tell me if, if you um, needed a definition? We'll start with Michelle. You're the furthest west. Um, either what is climate change or what is climate? So how is climate different than weather? So any comments on any of those topics or questions? Well, weather is what you have every day, and climate is something that ha happens over and over and over again. So it's the weather in a particular area over numerous years. Okay, I like how you brought in the years comment. Right, so we're looking on a decadal scale probably when we're examining climate. Weather can be a minute-to-minute -minute event or certainly a day-to-date -day event with big changes. So, All right, how about at Lake Country? Any comments? Just the fact that the seasons are now coming at a different time than they would have typically been expected to. Okay, and I'm glad you brought that up because that relates to one of the, or two actually, of the pictures there at the bottom. What you're seeing is that planting map, when you should plant different varieties of uh, foliage. And the planting map has changed drastically over the years. And so you're looking at 1990 and then a more recent one, and you can see how the zones have actually moved upward. So that is um, evidence that the climate change is, in fact, happening in those, all of those areas. Okay, let's go to the next slide. A couple more questions there. So has the climate always been the same? So thinking historically, has the climate always been the same, and how do you know that? So Dana, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> well, let me ask you just personally, how, what do you know or what, um, what changes have happened? Have we always had the climate that we have today? Have we had times when it's colder, maybe we, you know, during uh, periods of colder glaciation, extreme glaciation, and then reduced glaciation? Have there been changes or has it remained constant? I'm sorry, I don't think you unmuted. Oh, do you have to get up to unmute? Okay, I apologize. Good to know, though. Thanks, Dana. Okay, we'll come back to Dana because I think she's having to get up to mute, and I don't want to uh, make her run around. This will be her exercise hour. <laughs> so then I'm going to skip on instead of um, continuing with the questions. I wanted to just get you thinking. So I'm going to skip on now to uh, introduce Margaret. So Margaret, I'll give you a second to uh, unmute. And Margaret is coming to us. Let's put that next slide back up there so we can see all that as I say it. So Margaret is coming to us. Whoops. We're getting the slides on there. Can we go to the next one? Yeah. 
There we go. That's all right. Are we going to the next one? So now our slides aren't switching. We never know. It's okay. There we go. Okay, so Margaret is coming to us from the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. So um, really interesting view. If you were with us on the first session, we talked about Earth from near and far and how we study Earth from near and how we study Earth from far away and why. So uh, think about that. And Margaret's got some really interesting information about how scientists have studied climate and what they know from that. So Margaret, I'm going to introduce you and let you uh, start covering your slide. Okay, great. You can hear me, right? Yes, great. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending. Uh, I'm in Madison, Wisconsin. We're having a, a nice spring day today where it's about, it's in the 50s. I like that. So we have a, on this first slide an image, uh, a composite image from satellites with sea surface temperature and water vapor imagery. We can go ahead now, Bonnie. Thanks. So starting with what we know, I think many of you have probably heard about the IPCC, that's the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. And just last year and this spring, last fall and this spring, they are coming out with the latest, uh, latest editions of their report. The previous one was in 2007, so now 2013 and 2014, they have uh, their latest report and they have three takeaway messages. And we're going to uh, just go over those three takeaway messages about what we know. And first, the warming of the climate system is unequivocal. This is a quote from the IPCC report. Um, and you can read the rest of the text that is also in the report. Or also, this image shows the Muir Glacier um, from 1882 and 2005. And as the report says, it's unequivocal. The atmosphere and oceans have worn, snow and ice have diminished, sea levels rising, and concentrations of greenhouse gases are increasing. Thanks, Bonnie. So what has caused the climate to change? Thanks, Margaret. Yes, I, I was having a little trouble unmuting myself there. So any comments on that? Any guesses? What is causing this? And I would like to hear your thoughts before we get going with what we know. What do you think is causing this? OK, let's call on people as any good teacher would. <laughs> Let's go out to Mecklenburg schools. Give us some guesses. What kind of things could be causing climate change? How about industrialization? Aha. Okay. Good thought. We're going to like put that on the list. If I was doing it, I'd put that on my word wall, right? <laughs> Anybody else there have anything else? Global warming. Okay. Holes in the ozone. Okay. All right. Definitely some things that have been in the news. Okay. How about Dana? Do you want to add anything to that list? I don't want to make you run around. There I go, making her run around again. I think they touched on the big ones. I mean, th those are probably the two biggest. Um, factors, or my, most widely known at least. Okay, and Dana, do you want me to not call on you all the time because you have to run around? Is that easier? It's your choice. I can either sit back here where you don't see anything here, or I can sit over there but then have to come over here to unmute. Yeah, yeah, you can sit over where we can see you and I'll skip over you, but you go run and interrupt us if you want to say anything, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, Michelle. You want to add anything to that list? We've gotten some general terms, maybe something specific or another general term. Any thoughts? Well, um, the CO2 emissions, um, the just the Earth changes. The Earth is constantly changing. So part of that's probably a big key component of that as well. Also, the equation that you were showing us last week. The equation you were showing last week. Okay. So the equation you're referring to was Earth's energy balance, correct? 
Yes. Okay. All righty. So if the balance is out of balance, that could cause some of the warming. Okay, great thoughts. So, Margaret, let's turn it back over to you and go through your slides some more. Let's see what scientists are finding. So, I'm um, back to the IPCC report and what we know. And along with the fact that warming is unequivocal, the human influence on the climate system is clear. The evidence, are you guys, some of you said these, increasing greenhouse gas concentrations, uh, positive radiative forcing, that is actually talking about the energy balance equation, uh, and radiative forcing moves that uh, energy balance equation that you were talking about. So positive means it's moving it to make it warmer. Observed warming, we've been able to document warming in several different places around the Earth and our general understanding of the climate system. We know that the human influence on climate change is clear. Thanks. Go ahead, Bonnie. And the other takeaway point that the IPCC would like to share is that we need to do things now. Limiting climate change will require substantial and sustained reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. So this is, as you can see on the slide, the 2013 Summary for Policymakers. Thanks, Bonnie. Go ahead. OK, so what evidence shows that the climate has changed? You've just heard Margaret's information and, and the details that the scientists have found and the conclusions they've drawn. What evidence do you see of that? Whenever you watch the news at night and they show you the record lows and highs, they're not from the 1800s anymore. They're all within the last 20, 30 years. Good point. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? We don't have to, but does anybody else want to comment before we go on? Okay. Margaret, go ahead and continue. All right. Two ways that we know it, proxy data, that might be a new term for some people, and direct observations, which is what uh, you just uh, mentioned, uh, the observations of record high temperatures, temperatures and low temperatures. So proxy data is something that um, uh, we used before we were able to make direct measurements. Things like uh, fossils, tree rings, ice cores, um, proxy data are clues to past climates. And direct observations, uh, like I said, uh, rain gauges, satellite observations, thermometers, altimeters. Okay, and Margaret, we're getting some comments in from viewers uh, that are connected remotely as well. Well, some of the evidence that they are uh, identifying is deforestation and that the greenhouse effect is a part of this whole equation as well. So I wanted to add that in. I'll be quiet now and let you continue. No, that's great. Ice core data, I just, okay. Here's some of the uh, how far back proxy data goes. So um, it's usually prior to 150 years ago, because about 150 years ago, people were able to take direct measurements. So you can see fossils go back quite a bit, uh, isotopes a little bit shorter, um, and glacial features a little bit uh, shorter record, and so on through this chart. And so I'm going to spend a little time talking about ice core data. And you can see on this chart, uh, methane, which is CH4 in green. The temperature is in red in the middle. And then uh, carbon dioxide is in blue on the top. And you can see that there is a relationship between these, these variables over time. So that goes back over 160,000 years. And we were able to map this relationship with the Vostok ice core data. And we have some pictures of scientists here uh, with the ice cores. Um, and one of the activities I'm going to show you uh, is a, a way to look at the relationships between uh, temperature and carbon dioxide and methane over time. And this has been confirmed from the Vostok ice core. 
Very funny, thanks. So now I'm going to show you an activity that's online all the time that we use uh, that shows this relationship. And also I'm going to tell you why I do this. It's, uh, one way that we uh, look at past climates before the Industrial Revolution was the Milankovitch cycles. Milankovitch was a scientist who was interned during the World War I. So instead of being in prison, he put in a public library. He spent the entire time trying to work out his theory about uh, the Milankovitch cycles. He did. He used a slide calculator um, to uh, to try to make connections between past climates and uh, the cycles. Okay, wait. Cycles. Uh, of the Earth. Sorry. So this is online. You're going to have the uh, link to this. And you should be able to see the Earth over around the moon now. Or our sun. <laughs> and a lot of little control bu buttons that you can uh, click. So you can look at the orbit from the top. You can look at the orbit from the side. You can change uh, using the uh, the uh, scale on the right, change through time. It's a little slower in Google Hangout, but um, so I'm going to put it back to the side view. And then you can check to see the differences of uh, the centricity of the Earth, which is uh, how circular an orbit is. And you can look through time, what it has been in the past, the precession, which is the angle of the Earth uh, during the seasons, you can click them on or off, or the tilt. And then the magenta line shows the effect uh, through time, through history, on uh, temperature of these different things. And then you can also click on the actual data, the Vostek ice core data. I'm going to click all three on with the Vostek ice core. And you can see that they correlate quite well. So the, the end of the story with Milankovitch is that he had this theory. He was uh, not, it was not accepted by science until the Vostok ice core came out and confirmed that, in fact, these were the main uh, influences on past climate before humans. Um, uh, and six years after his death, I guess, the Vostok ice core confirmed that. So uh, he, didn't, he didn't get to know when he died that, this was a, uh, that it was verified, that his theory was verified by data. You can use this applet to explore this with your students. And I'll show you later in this discussion a way to get, uh, so if you find this URL, I'm going to scroll down and show you that there's a way to work through it, some suggestions about how to work through it. And also, uh, I'll show you later some lesson plans that teachers have made. Uh, Bonnie, can I interrupt for a second? We're not sure what's happening, but our slides are not changing. No, this isn't changing. This is an applet that uh, Margaret is sharing. So it's an online app. What you should see is the globe moving around the sun. The earth is moving around the sun. No, we're not seeing that. We're seeing um, uh, what may be an applet, but it doesn't seem to be animating. OK. Well, let me say this. When you go to the event page, the link to the applet is there. And so um, you'll be able to see it work when you go to the event page and check it out. And we'll go back and give it a little time. It could be the internet connection. Sometimes it takes a while for things to come through. Um, so we'll give it a little bit of time as Margaret's explaining and see if it comes through. Bonnie, can I add That's something? Fine. Sure. If he will click on her, Margaret's name down, if he sees the um, little boxes, if she'll, he'll click on Margaret's name, you can see what she's showing. I had to well, change the view to show Margaret. I had to actually click on her name to see okay. what she was doing. Thank you, Michelle, because we're doing that on our end, but that may not be coming through to your end, so thank you. If you're not seeing Margaret's slides, let me just reiterate what Michelle is saying. If you click on Margaret's picture, a little blue box should appear around Margaret's picture, and then you'll see what she is sharing. Can you try that, Bob? Or was that Bill? <laughs> it's Bill. Yeah, I'm on her slide now. I see her. 
Okay. All right. So, Margaret, did you finish talking about that? I feel like we interrupted you talking about it. Do you need to say a little bit more about it? Well, I did unshare, uh, basically based on time, but if you'd like me to go back and do it again, I can. Yeah, go ahead. That's okay. All right. So, you can go back to the slides. Okay. Go back to the slides now, not the applet. Okay. Well, I quit sharing. Okay. Okay, so while we're here at the slides, let me say this is the applet that Margaret was sharing. If you didn't see it moving, the link for it is in the Hangout, um, the event page, and when you click on it, what you'll see is the Earth moving around the sun, and then there are various parameters at the bottom of that that you can click on to make adjustments and see different things. Okay, so we're going to turn it back over to Margaret to continue covering the slides. Moving on from proxy data, we have direct observations. And this has been going on for about 150 years. We have a picture here of a cooperative observer. Uh, so that, that the, uh, our country has a lot of people who volunteer to take uh, temperatures and have been doing it for years. This is uh, from the 19th century, and a cooperative observer taking a high and low temperature. So as the slide says, consistent, repeated, long-term observations of weather are the foundation for climate science. Thanks, Bonnie. Go ahead. The next two slides show where we get uh, temperatures from. This is uh, high and low temperatures every day from around the world. You can keep going, Bonnie. Thanks. And uh, then the precipitation one uh, just went by. And then this is really what I do. What we do in my building is satellite remote sensing. We have two uh, uh, pictures of the orbits, the two orbits, the geostationary orbit and how that goes around the Earth, and a polar orbit, and then some images with the different data we collect. So since the 1960s, uh, satellites have become more and more important, and you can imagine that since we get a global view, uh, they are that much more important. Uh, and in fact, some of the studies that show that the uh, energy balance of the Earth is shifting is based on satellites, NASA satellites, the Ceres program. Um, and main of the series program, series mission. Thanks, Bonnie. Go ahead. And um, before I advance this slide, you'll remember uh, that last month we talked a lot about the series mission and the series instrument that is flying aboard several NASA satellites and how that was related to the school program and how the clouds are related to the energy budget. So tying all those topics together is important in this study as well. Okay, uh, this is from the IPCC again, from their report that came out last fall, and it shows four different things that we are watching that uh, show that the climate is changing on Earth. Uh, a, the top left corner is snow cover in the spring, and you can see that's going down, especially since 1960 or so. Arctic sea ice extent, which is mainly the summer, is going down also. You can see the uh, tilt, the angle of the, that graph. And then see the bottom left, upper ocean heat content. This is mainly uh, this is from uh, buoys and also from satellite data. And that's going up. So the, the warmth of the upper ocean is getting warmer. And sea level change is also going up. You can see that in the bottom right corner. And then uh, the colored uh, lines at the end of satellite data again. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, this is going to go, Mary is going to go into more detail on this later, but a great way to look at direct observations in real time is this resource, uh, climate.nasa.gov, and you can see the, the bar along the top. I've got carbon dioxide uh, highlighted in this screenshot, but you can find out current and up-to-date information on Arctic sea ice minimum, carbon dioxide, sea level, global temperature, and land ice. So this is a great resource from NASA. Go ahead, Bonnie. NOAA also has some great resources. I like this one. It's called 10 Signs of a Warming World. Uh, you go to this URL and then click on any of these. I have Arctic Sea Ice highlighted here. 
but it uh, explains more about how we measure and study these uh, different parameters. Uh, similar to the NASA value that I just showed you, but this has, I think, some good explanations about how we're measuring that. Uh, same, same parameters, pretty much, but uh, another way to, uh, to share that information with your students. Okay, so let's do a little more thinking here. How is this current climate change different from previous changes? If you think about geologic history, um, I know as specifically in earth science and possibly in other grades as well, you talk about climate changes that have happened during the different eras throughout geologic history. Well, how is this climate change different than those? It's Any much guesses? more rapid. Great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other thoughts? Okay, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Margaret, and I'll move the slides for you. Great. So that answer was spot on. Uh, the rate of change is unprecedented. And we, we're not sure how, how everyone's going to adapt to it, uh, people including. But here is a great slide from the last IPCC report where it shows the annual mean temperatures of black, the little dots. Um, over the last uh, 150 years or so. And you can see from the, uh, for those of you who teach math, math also, you know that the slope of a line is related to the rate. And you can see that uh, in this graph, 150 years is in red, 100 years is in purple, 50 years is in orange, and then 25 years is in yellow. And you can see the slope or the slant of uh, the, the 25 years is much steeper, uh, kind of showing that. Uh, the rate is getting much faster, and in fact, faster than anything I've ever documented. Thanks, Bob. This is another slide from the last IPCC report, and it shows the values of greenhouse gases since the Industrial Revolution. And you can see that the slope is so fast in the last uh, 150 years that if you, you stretch out over time, it looks like a straight line almost. So these are called sometimes referred to as the hockey stick, stick graphs. I want to take a minute, though, and just uh, talk about something that was said a little bit earlier in this um, Google Hangout. And someone mentioned that one way that we uh, know that climate change is happening is or that we can attribute one of the reasons that we might attribute climate change to would be uh, holes in the ozone. And I want to bring that up because it's actually one of the most common misconceptions about climate change. There's no connection to the ozone hole and climate change um, because the ozone hole is actually very high in the atmosphere and it's mainly over Antarctica. And uh, it's just, they're just not related. They're not uh, connected at all as far as uh, global warming and, uh, and the ozone hole. So thanks, Bonnie. Keep going. And we can talk about that more if anyone wants to. I'm going to change the slide in a second. I just want to say thank you. We as teachers know it's equally as important to teach what something is as it is what it's not. So climate change is related to these factors that we're talking about. Climate change is not related to ozone and hole in the ozone layer. So that's equally important. Thanks for bringing that out, Margaret. So now trying to look at the connections between uh, humans and climate change or the Industrial Revolution. I think uh, we're all pretty clear on that, but here's a good way to look at it. We talk about climate models a lot, and usually we're looking at projections of climate models. And what this is, is you're using climate models to look at the connection between uh, global warming and uh, time. So here we have observations of temperatures over time. So these are observed, direct observations. Um, you can see they're going up. You can just click through this, Bonnie. Now, using a, a computer model, a global model, we look at what those temperatures should be if there weren't any human activities on Earth. And so there you can see in the blue what that should be. And you can see there's some relation to some volcanic activity that's happened. So this is natural forcings only. And then if you actually add human activities on Earth, 
and overlay it, you get that red line. And in fact, it's a perfect match with the observed temperatures. So using a, a computer model for the blue, we can see that they are related. You can keep moving. This is great because we're, you know, we don't have a lot of time. And here we have a slide from the IPCC again. Oh, I'm sorry. These are uh, summaries of the IPCC report since 1995. So they come out with a report about every five or six years. 1995, uh, they thought the balance of evidence suggests a discernible human influence. And then six years later, they said new and stronger evidence that most of the warming over the last 50 years is attributable to human activities. In 2007, the IPCC was saying that most of the warming was very likely due to anthropogenic or man-made greenhouse gas, gas concentrations. And then last fall, it is extremely likely that human influence has been the dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid-20th century. I also wanted to mention that if you go to the IPCC webpage, they have all their PowerPoints online. If you ever want to uh, get any any of this information from them. And I am using, this is a slide directly from the IPCC report. So it might be a little busy, but it shows that same thing I, I showed you from the 2007 report. Except that this is from last fall. And it's different places around the world where the black lines now are the observed temperatures. Blue, the blue lines are what computer models would show if people weren't on uh, the planet. And then the pink lines are um, the what we would expect with human activities. And regardless of where you go around the Earth, uh, the black observed temperatures fit best with the uh, pink lines. Thanks, Bonnie. OK, so these next slides, we're, we're going to move through pretty quickly because they are, first of all, hopefully something you're already covering in your classroom. What is currently being done and what else can be done? What actions can we take to reduce our impact on the environment. So we're going to go through these pretty quickly. And I want to make a point. We are going to have this PowerPoint available. So you'll be able to go to all of these slides and all of the different uh, links included in them uh, when the presentation is concluded. OK, Margaret, I'll just yes. flip these pretty quickly. And you can say what you want to say about each one. That's great. There is a document called The Essential Principles of Climate Literacy, and the guiding principle is that we can do something about it. I'm going to let you just go through them, Bonnie. <laughs> uh, and everything we do has a co-benefit, whether it's saving money, having cleaner air, having healthier, uh, having, having improvements in your health. So if people don't want to talk about how to mitigate climate change, talk about healthier uh, lifestyles. We're going to go to some teacher resources. Uh, this is one that we developed here at SIMS. And this is a web page, uh, I'm sorry, a course that's entirely online. You can log in and print out a, a certificate of completion when you're done that says you spent 20 hours doing this course. Uh, it is based on the 2007 IPCC report. And we are currently updating that by uh, September, October. It will be totally updated with the new data. Um, but it won't be ready till fall. The other thing is you can see on the, uh, uh, along the top uh, that there are lesson plans that have been created by teachers, including there are uh, two about the Milankovitch cycles, one for middle school and high school. And there's lesson plans about uh, several other things that teachers have used in their classroom and apparently are still using. We pulled them recently. So uh, this is a resource you might want to use. And I said you can log in and print out a certificate of completion. You don't have to log in. You can just access any information at any time in this. And there is a Spanish language version also. Thanks, Bonnie. So uh, we have lots of applets. Uh, and so here's another, here's a, 
I'll view them. They're all online all the time. They're updated in Flash, so they work on the iPad, iPods. I hope you guys can hear me. We can. Oh, yes, yeah. we can. Okay, Great. You can just keep going, Bonnie. Oh, modern, we, I'm sorry, uh, uh, modern water cycle diagram. We we're trying to show the kink that humans put into the water cycle. So this we developed this about a year ago. Uh, this is a Vela online in high resolution. You'll have the URL, URL after this talk. But you can see the traditional water cycle and then the little yellow arrows, arrows are how humans are really kind of influence the water cycle. This is my favorite new resource that I really hope you go visit. Uh, it's the monthly climate digest. And if you click on it and listen to it, you'll get a global climate brief in less than three minutes on something that looks like the Earth. So of all the resources, uh, watching the Climate Digest every, for three minutes every month, uh, I think is the most way to stay kind of climate smart or climate aware about the whole Earth. Uh, and finally, I also have a link to our project uh, that we did with NASA, the Climate Literacy Ambassadors, which had, also has most of these resources on it, too. So thank you very much for tuning in. Feel free to contact me with any follow-up questions. Excellent. Yes, and you will have Margaret's information because, as I said, this uh, this PowerPoint presentation will be posted as a PDF on the NICE website. Uh, that will probably happen sometime tomorrow, so you can check back to the NICE website for that and get the information there. And uh, the Ambassadors Project is the project that Margaret did with the uh, NICE program funding that she received. So, Margaret, thanks for bringing that up, and I hope you'll check that out as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, I have a few announcements I want to make, but are there any comments or questions about anything that Margaret covered so far? Okay, with a show of hands while you're thinking, how many of you are excited to see um, another water cycle diagram? <laughs> I'm raising my hand because I know I love to look at, yes, I love looking at the different ones and um, just comparing the different information that's in them. So I'm excited to see another water cycle diagram to be able to go and look at. They're really important to understand. So, great. All right, well, we're going to take a few minutes now to do some announcements. We haven't done this in every broadcast. Um, but this is the last broadcast, as I said, until, the, uh, until we come back in the fall. And so I want to let you know about some things that are happening and coming up. So Patricia Moore is connected from Johnson Space Center. And Patricia is going to tell us about an event that's coming up. And we're going to go back to the slides and show a slide there, actually. All right. Well, hello, everybody. And give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Good? All right, cool. All right, well, um, welcome. This we're at the Johnson Space Center Digital Learning Network right now, and uh, we've have several special events happening through the spring. Uh, but um, this one in particular really makes sense to share with you today. It's all about climate change, and we're going to have our second climate change uh, webcast that's going to be on the DL Info channel, which is going to be streamed live on the Digital Learning Network homepage. So all you have to do is go to dln.nasa.gov. And what's great about this webcast on April 22nd is that it's on Earth Day. It starts at 12 o'clock Eastern, and it lasts about an hour. Probably won't last an hour and a half. It's been ending at about 1 o'clock each day. So, it's, um, so it starts at noon and ends at 1 o'clock Eastern. And it's not just with NASA. It's a collaboration between the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, and then of course NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So Johnson Space Center is going to host two guests, two experts from the EPA regional office in Dallas, Texas, and they're coming down here to Johnson and to share with you how the EPA plays a role in climate change and how they help regulate and keep our air 
um, clean, and then we're going to hop on over to Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, where um, Aaron McKinley will be hosting two, well, th this time there will be one, one NOAA scientist that's going to share with us how, um, how NOAA helps predict climate change and how they use NASA's satellites as well as some of their own and observations they make at sea to, to, to predict climate change. And then we're going to close it off by by Aaron McKinley showing us some of the climate models that NASA and NOAA have put together and illustrating those on the green screen so you can see the changes in the atmosphere, changes in the ocean, changes in temperature um, over time. And it's all simulated and, and it's, it looks live, like live data coming in from satellites recently so you can actually see the changes that are happening around Earth. So uh, we've got three live schools that are participating, and then we're going to, um, if all goes well, we'll take some webcast questions if we have time. So if I put out the email address during the program, we're doing good on time, and we'll be able to take questions from the audience from the Internet. And if we're doing kind of not so great on time, we'll just um, limit that to the three schools that have signed up to participate live. But everyone's welcome to watch it. It will be streamed live, at, like I said, at noon on the 22nd, noon Eastern, and we hope you can join us. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Patricia. I know uh, I wanted to let Patricia share that information with us because we're running a little bit behind schedule and I didn't want to tie her up. So thanks, Patricia, for being with us. I hope you'll uh, consider connecting with your students next week to watch that webcast. We're going to switch over now and do our NASA moment. Um, Margaret mentioned that the climate.nasa.gov site is a great place for information about climate and some of those animations that uh, Patricia was mentioning are available on that site. So, Marilei, would you take it away and tell us a little bit about that site? Hello, everybody. Um, it's really nice to see you again. I think spring has sprung, even though some people can spring again. Um, it's re really nice to see warmer temperatures creeping back up, right? I was born and raised in the tropics, so I like it when it's warm. One of the things I want to highlight today is that climate.nasa.gov, the climate website, because it has a lot of cool information and also data that we can access. Right? We, we want to focus on how to add math into the science and engineering that we are using. So um, we're going to go into the website. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all are. Okay, great. So this is the website, climate.nasa.gov. And then what we're going to see here is a few things. And I know that Margaret kind of pointed out. One of the cool things is that you have the vital signs of the planet right here. Okay, so the state of the planet. And it's divided into Arctic sea ice minimum, land ice, global temperature, sea ice. And just by running um, over it, you can see some data already. But if you go here, the first tab on the left, it's key indicators. Mm -hmm. And you can see all, all those indicators. Great. There you go. So here are the key indicators. So first one is carbon dioxide. You can already see the data there. Here, right here on the on the right, you can download the data. So then you can just download the data and have access to the data and have even your uh, students play with the data and discover it. There's also some great information about how to read this data and what is it telling us. And then it has these, this sidebar here where you can scroll and look at how the data has changed over time. I think that's one of the really cool things about the key indicators on this website. Okay, so again, if I keep scrolling down, the global surface temperature, you can download the data right above the graph, and then it has that slide bar where you can go through the temperatures. Okay? One of the cool things also with the graph, if you want to play with the graph, is that it highlights also the data. So if you notice, when I go over a, a dot, it tells me the temperature in the year. So 1932, and it was negative 0.11 degrees Celsius. Okay. So it has all those indicators. You can play around. You can um, get that data. 
and then you can use the sidebar. Now that's not the only thing that there is in this website. There's causes and effects, there's NASA's role, some key websites, and of course, NICE, NASA's Innovation and Climate Education is part of those websites. There's interactives too, which are really good if you have like a um, laboratory time for in your classroom. You can use these. There's quizzes that they can to take, tours. There's images and videos as well that you can use. There's a website also called the Climate Kids. So depending on the age group that you have, this website might be good for your little ones and understand climate. And then there's games. There's things that you can make, things that you can know, and how to keep with the latest. In um, a teacher's corner, right? We always like to see this teacher corner. Okay. Now here, all the way in the bottom, there are four educators. And these are some great, great resources that you want to make sure that you use. Okay. So this is a great website to use and have some great stuff. But one of the most important, I think, is the data that is available. All right. So, so that's been the NASA moment. Thank you so much. And we'll see you the next school year. Thank you, Marile. Thank you. And Marile's right. It will be till the next school year, but we're giving you lots to do while you're disconnected from us. And uh, one of the things I want to mention is don't forget that every one of these sessions has been recorded. So if you just go to YouTube, and put in Ask Nice in the month. Ask Nice November was when we talked about how to take your students outside and study the local environment around your school. Ask Nice, whatever month you want to look at, you just type in Ask Nice in the month, and the recording for that session comes up, and you can watch that recording. And all the links that we covered are in there and everything as well. Righty, so I'm going to go back to just a few other announcements of some upcoming events. Maybe I am, if our mouse cooperates. Maybe. Here we go. All right. There we go. All right. So we heard from Patricia. And I also want to let you know that next month, whoops, hang on. There we go. Next week on Earth Day, NASA is running a campaign where you can take a selfie of you, uh, aka a selfie, and send it in. Just tweet it out from your Twitter account with the hashtag global selfie. And if you're familiar with astronaut photography and how the blue marble was the first picture made uh, once the astronauts traveled outside the atmosphere of the Earth, they're going to make a new picture, uh, or a different picture, that will be all of the selfies stitched together. So they're going to make a new global selfie showing all of those stitched together. And the link to, all you need to do is really use the format that I'm showing you, but the link to more information is in the event page, so you can read all about how to do that. But just get that tweeted in by next Tuesday. And then I want to highlight that the National Climate Assessment is coming out in just a few weeks. Um, unlike the IPCC report that is global, the National Climate Assessment will actually have information about each geographical area across the United States. So you want to click into the National Climate Assessment and find that. It'll be out uh, probably May 5th is the most recent date that I've heard. So do check in for that. And then this summer, we will be taking Ask Nice on the Road. So on the road again with Ask Nice. Um, one of the places that we'll be going to is Kentucky Speedway. So if you're down in that area and you're watching this broadcast, we will be coming down there to do, I'm going to go backwards here, because we'll be coming back down there to do the session that you're seeing here. So we'll be talking about solar energy, and how many of you know that there is a racetrack completely powered by solar energy? There's a NASCAR track that runs on solar power. I'm not going to say which. You'll have to tune in and find out. <laughs> but if you'll follow us on NASA underscore Langley, so L-A-N-G-L-E-Y, NASA underscore Langley. If you'll follow that account on Twitter, you'll see tweets go out from us throughout the summer as we're traveling around the state of Virginia and maybe even beyond and taking Ask Nice on the road. And again, if you need more information about Kentucky Speedway, uh, contact us. And we want to add, that is a teacher professional development uh, opportunity. 
So if you are near the track and you want to come and earn some teacher professional development, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to send you some information. All right, so I think that's all that I have. Yeah, we can unshare. So uh, any comments from the sites as well? Any questions? Uh, we didn't take too much time for questions as we went through. But anything you want to ask before we disconnect the live broadcast? Okay, going once, twice, checking. OK, we're going to disconnect. Thank you for all of those who are connected. And we appreciate you being with us and hope you will watch the session with us in the fall. Thank you, Bonnie. We all, we all enjoyed it and we appreciate being a part of it.